And let's talk about Adam Lambert's new EP. So it finally came out. Shout out to Afters. And I will say that over the weekend, I was getting my life. Now, here's the thing. I told y'all, I, I said, this shit better not be under no damn 20 minutes. <laughs> and of course, the damn album is under 20 minutes. But it's six songs, though. But, you know, we have, we heard the other, the other singles and things of that nature. But I don't know if y'all know, but my favorite song of the album is Neck. I cannot stop listening to that damn song. I've had that song on repeat for the past 48 hours. Like, literally, I be getting my life. I be living my gay fantasy with this record. And this is what I've been saying for years. This is what I've been wanting my queer pop stars to give me. Stop giving me that corny ass show toony. And if y'all like show tunes, that's good with y'all. But I've always felt like that when it comes to gay people, you don't embrace the one thing about us that makes us unique from other people is that we as men and as women as well, if you're a queer person, whatever, gay, straight, you know, gay, lesbian, transsexual, whatever. Live your fantasy. Let your freak flag fly. Why should we always try to, <clears throat> excuse me, move away from that because we don't want to offend or we don't want to ruffle feathers or we always worry about what the other person thinks. But I'm sitting there like, as part of being homosexuals, we post the, they put the sex part in homosexual for a damn reason. Why can't we admit that we like it rough or we, um, I'm going to just put it up in you or the things that we do. So if people get mad about it, oh, well, then you ain't got to listen to it. But what Adam Lambert is doing, in my opinion, how is that different from, you know, what we get from Prince, what we've gotten from Madonna, what we've gotten from so many other artists who have push sexuality to the forefront. And I feel like as queer people, we should embrace that. And if you're a queer musician, you should embrace that. And I love the fact that Adam is someone who's in his 40s, who has come to that place. But, you know, he and I are around the same age, Chad. So, um, you know, he's 42. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, when you're in that same age range in that whole situation, it's like, why not the embrace the unfiltered part of who we are and that hedonistic side. Like I just I live for it. So I came across this um article in People magazine where he was literally talking about the new album and he's saying he's feeling unapologetic about embracing his sexy side. So, you know, with him going into the whole house EDM um, sound, which I've always said that Adam Lambert should have ventured into that. But I understand, like, when he was first starting out, they wanted him to play more of the glam rock, rock and roll, very much that. And Adam definitely gave that because he had that powerful voice. And I was like, that definitely works for him. Is like doing the whole glam rock thing, doing the whole rock and roll, you know, that sort of vibe. And, you know, his fans are called Glamberts. So he says, so often in the past, I'll be waiting, uh, I'll be in a writing situation and you're with a couple of songwriters and you're all dying to come up with a rhyme to something. And my silly little dirty mind will come up with a naughty little lyric. This is what he told people exclusively. And then we all laugh and go, oh, no, no, we can't put that in there. That's too much. And so with this one, it was like, no, let's do it. Let's do the naughty rhyme. He continues of the EP um, out already because it said the 19th but it's out already so he said it just felt like i was finally going yeah let's do it so back in the day he was like i've always been trying to push for a little naughtiness in my lyrics and to play up that that sort of thing but everybody was scared oh no we can't do that because you know the people are gonna get mad and the and, you know the straight people are gonna, but it's like okay so we don't need to it's like that's but that's a part of who I am, and I need to express that. And I feel like as artists, this is why we gravitate towards people that we can resonate and relate to. And I think that's also why gay men gravitate towards women, because women are exploring those sides of themselves unapologetically, and gay men can relate to that. That's why we reside with all the... We gravitate towards the divas. The, for me, it's the more authentic ones. I don't go with these old fake broads that just be pounding on the sex just because they need to sell a damn record. But if it comes from a place of authenticity, I'm with you. So, um, you know, I do, and I have to say, I do love Deep House. That was another song, too, because it's got that Deep House vibe. And I think that's what a lot of it sounds like, that this progressive EDM Deep House type of vibe. So the lyrics is if, in the picture, if you see it, because he was posting a lot of photos. Um, and who needs albums anymore and CDs when you got Instagram where you can post all your photo shoots? <laughs> Don't need to chase the party because I get to taste your body. So hot, hot wasabi. You got to like nobody. Don't need to chase the party. Your kiss is hitting like Molly. So hot, hot, get naughty. 
You got it like got me rolling in your deep house. Okay, bitch. And I think he said that he wrote this song. Basically, it was based off his relationship with Oliver. So, and you know, I do like a lot of the songs. Face, I believe what he said it was inspired by um, Nine Inch Nails or something or another. Because um, some people said, oh, it's giving me um, a Nine Inch Nails vibe or whatever. And he was like, that was the the whole that was one of the references and shout out to you because i do love um i am a huge trent Reznor fan and also when i was doing the foo fighters concert they have they've been using the drummer from nine inch nails on their tour because you know taylor hawkins passed away from the drug od so they've been using um the the drummer from nine inch nails on their tour and i was like yes you better work so he said also i spent so many years on tour and working heavily focused on my career and once the pandemic happened it allowed me to sort of recalibrate a bit and reprioritize certain things the couple of years that have followed me have been great i've been able to have a bit more of a personal life for a little while and i'm in an amazing relationship and we socialize a lot and put a, a lot of parties and we go out and i just wanted to make music for that sort that sort of reflected that experience that reflected that reality and I told you I saw Adam Lambert when I was at um when I went to Fire Island around fourth. I mean, you know, on Independence Day, I have been I was eating outside. You know, they had a little area where you could eat outside. So I was sitting there with Sailor Mermaid. Shout out to him, friend of the show. We were hanging out. We went to Fire Island together. We were eating and stuff. And I happened to look to my left. I'm like, is that Adam Lambert? Because he had that the 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 hair looked white. So he had the hair. The spiky, you know, hair, whatever, makeup was flawless. And then I saw the big tattoo sleeve on his arm. So that's why I recognized him. So I was like, oh, and he was with his little entourage. I was going to run down there and be like, hey, girl. Because, I'm, you know, if I'm in the middle of eating, that would just be gross. <laughs> but anyway, so um, he also said, it's not, a, um, it's not afraid to lift the veil a little bit. This is a bedroom conversation. It's an EP that hopefully sets the mood and makes people feel inspired to be sexy, whatever that means to you. Whether it means you're going to hook up with somebody, a stranger, whether it means you're going to have an amazing night with your partner and you're already with whether it means that you're going to stay single, liberated, and just feel powerful, it's meant to make you feel a certain kind of way. And then they said, while he's pushed boundaries before, Adam says this album is unlike any project he's done as he's able to explore new parts of his voice, including lower and moodier stuff. So it's definitely not as much about, hey, look what I can do. It's not like a show off kind of energy. It's more of a look at the mood that I can set. This was sort of more the goal. It was creating an energy. It was creating a vibe. And that's the thing. Oh, yeah. And I love Cunty. That's another one of the minds. I love Lube. I love Wet Dream. I love, first of all, I love the whole damn EP. Like, there's not one weak song on this EP. And another thing I will say this, that I think a lot of people forget about when it comes to dance music. Dance music is not always about, oh, well, I could show off. And that's what I've always called them, vocal masturbators. Like, um, Christina Aguilera is like, bitch, we know you can sing. Like, at this point, you don't need to show off anymore. And it's not bitch in a bad way. I'm just saying, you know, you know how we gays talk. <laughs> Like, you don't need to show off. We know you can sing. We know you can do a little yang yang. Like, you don't need to show off. And I love the fact that I think that's what I really like about this EP is like, we know Adam Lambert can sing. And there's parts in um, Wet Dream that you do hear him kind of go, you know, the the usual, you know, wailing and all the other stuff in the chorus, in the background. But for the most part, it's like, it's all about setting the mood and the letting the the production do its work but also we have those raunchy lyrics in there we also have you know i'm singing basically just it's it's about a feeling it's about a vibe it's not always about yeah y'all know i can sing and i gotta show up because i always hate that and then and, I, and that's why i get irritated when a lot of people was like well so and so can't sing because y'all always equate singing to be aretha franklin patty labelle adele people like that mariah carey like y'all think that's the only type of singing that people could do and it's like that's not this different this levels to the music business this levels to being an artist it's not always all about you got to be able to wail and have a five octave vocal range to be considered a singer i don't agree with that so um if you're an artist it's all about i'm creating this mood and this atmosphere with a lot of you know a lot of the singers and so adam has also mention a lot of his you know inspiration for the music he said 
There's an audience out there that responds positively to someone saying, I'm going to do what I want. Some of my favorite artists have been artists that have pushed buttons and were provocateurs. Look at Prince. Look at Madonna. Look at George Michael after he got busted. Uh Uh-uh, that's a read. (laughs) Because I was like, you know, that is true. Because George Michael was basically playing the game. I watched this documentary where it was like, you know, he played the game for a long time until he. I feel like he purposely got busted with the whole, you know, bathroom situation because i guess he took got tired of being in the closet but he said look at george Michael. he got busted he leaned into it he was like i'm gonna make this part of my art and i've always really admired that spirit of pushing things and saying what others might not as do i that's probably why I gravitate towards a lot of the artists that I gravitate towards. And he says, in fact, that inspiration became so clear that Lambert even says a friend who listened to the EP told him, this is totally your Madonna sex book. This is your moment. Adding how at the how the end of the final track, Face, also reminds me of Madonna's Justify My Love. He says, it kind of gives that sound and that made me really happy. I was like, oh my God, we've got, we've kind of accidentally created that vibe. Now, when it came to the creative process of writing and producing, Lambert says that it was a collaborative environment, one that also allowed him to, the ability to explore a topic he's never had the chance to delve into deeply. Saying, I love the team effort of making in making music these days. I got to work with songwriters, a lot of which are queer people, some of the producers as well. It wasn't a real tough nut to crack, to be honest with you. I just got in there and I was like, I can't, I want to write about being sexy after hours. I want to write about that sort of desire. I think I've definitely touched on the topic before in other songs or other projects, but not so directly. And I have to say, like, you know what? I've always said, like, I love that process of creating. This is like, collaborate with other people. Work, like, get people in a room, get, like, maybe two or three tops writers If where they can understand women. For me, it would be, like, women and homosexuals. Like, this is the things that I want to talk about. Let's brainstorm. Let's come up with some stuff. Throw some things out there. I'll say a sentence. Nothing's too good. Nothing's too bad. It's just whatever comes off the top of the head. And you got that one person. Okay, write that down. That's a good one. And I like that whole idea of collaborating because there's no I in team. I'm always someone that I'm willing to be a team player. I can work with other people. I mean, yeah, my Virgo side every now and again is like, okay, if you can't do the shit right, I'm going to do it myself. But I've always been receptive and open to, yeah, let's take the time let's collaborate and if i'm a produce if i'm working with producers i'm like sonically this is the mood that i've been feeling like i'm feeling a little madonna today a little raunchy very much um not vulgar with with sam smith but um i'm feeling more holy water <laughs> feeling very madonna holy water today let's kind of create something within that vibe or you know, I'm feeling very Kylie Minogue illusion or you know so we set the mood to that and this is so like Going based off of feeling and mood, in my opinion, is like where the the creativity resides. And this is like trying to get something similar to that. Now, speaking of Kylie Minogue, and I'm going to wrap this up. Girl, this is Adam Lambert people. These are the people that she needs, her team needs to, to seek out. And this is more of the sound that I need her to go into. Not that shit that she did with Tove Lu. And uh, B.B. Rexa, I'm not feeling that song. Like, it's cute or whatever. I have not visited, revisited that song since. No shade. You know, I live with Miss Kylie Minogue. But I have not revisited that song since I last heard it. And I feel like with Adam Lambert and what he's doing, I really hope that this opens up a Pandora's box for other queer artists to feel like, you know what, Adam Lambert basically opened that door for me to feel like, you know what, at this point, I'm feeling confident and I'm feeling sexy enough that I want to explore those topics. And I'm sure there's people out here that's doing it. And we need to we need to lean into that and embrace it and stop being afraid of our damn sexuality. So I say all this the same. Um, what do y'all think of Adam Lambert's new EP? Did y'all enjoy it? Did you feel like it was underwhelming? Me personally, I absolutely love the EP and I hope that he continues to fall in his direction of like that whole sound and that whole vibe. And I'm really hoping like we could get more music like this from him because I feel like I've been so disappointed with a lot of openly queer artists and the quality of music that they've been putting out there. I mean, there's a couple of people that um that I have been listening to that I will admit that you know what? Um, I need y'all to... I've I've been yearning for the longest for y'all to just be giving me my life and the type of vibe and stuff that y'all been giving me, but y'all have not been giving me what I need. But I feel like Adam Lambert has been the closest to give me 
you know, the sound and the vibe or whatever of what it has been, the sound that I've been looking forward to. Because I've been listening to, there's another queer artist. I listen to Vincent. He's a good one. Um, Summer Choice of On Stuff is cute, but I but I feel like his full album was a little, too, like, I need a, a little more of that dance. Like, I need, you need to kind of raise the tempo on some of your beats. A lot of it is too laid back for me for the most part, but I do like Choice of On Stuff. I also like Jordy. Jordy's another openly queer artist that I think a lot of people should check out. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, Jake Shears. Jake Shears released another great album that last, I think it was last year, Last Man Dancing. Great record. Like, there's a lot of queer artists that's been coming out and dropping really good quality dance pop music. But I need, I need a little more. <laughs> so let me know what y'all think in the comments down below.